In this segment, we're going to demonstrate the installation of the new Jim Black 10 round ventilation hatch. Once we have selected a location on the vessel that we would like to install the product, we have to determine the cutout. In this product, the cutout diameter is determined by the outside diameter of the trim ring. For today's installation, we're going to trace the trim ring now that we've selected our location. For today's installation, we have chosen to use a jigsaw or saber saw. There are many different ways that you can perform the cutout duties. You can use a sawzall, you can use a router and a router template, or a jigsaw. We're going to start out by drilling a starter hole that allows us to get the blade of our jigsaw started through the meat the material. Now, we're going to want to cut to the outside of our line to assure that we've got plenty of margin to get our trim ring to fit in. I'm going to go ahead and make a fit check to make sure that the hole is cut out properly. The trim ring needs to have a little bit of side to side play. You do not want to force fit the installation, otherwise as we progress the inside frame will not fit properly into the trim ring. When installing the trim ring, it is important to note whether we have upholstery, or whether we have fiberglass material that we're installing over. If we have upholstery, a sealant does very little good. If, we're, if we have fiberglass material, we recommend that a sealant be applied to the underside of the trim ring and then installed through the hull. The next step will be to cross drill in three to four locations and install countersunk number eight screws into the region between the outer deck and the inner deck to hold the trim ring in place. In this phase we're going to go ahead and install our side fasteners to hold our trim ring in place. I'm going to drill a clearance hole for starters for a number eight fastener. Okay, after we've drilled the initial clearance hole, I'm going to go ahead and use a countersink so that I can get my fastener to submerge itself in the side of the material. After I've finished with the countersink, I'm going to go ahead and use a hand Phillips screwdriver install this first screw so that I can keep the trim ring from moving around. You'll notice that the countersink allows the fastener to set flush. This is very important when it's, so that when we install our frame from the other side we don't have an interference problem. Now that we have this trim ring securely fastened, I'm going to go ahead and do a fit check to make sure that our frame and lid assembly nest inside the trim ring as designed. And we have a snug fit. Now, that's good. Snug is good. Force fit is not. Force fit may cause the frame and the lid to bind. Now that we're finished with the fit check, we went ahead and installed the frame onto the vessel, opened our lid, 
which as you'll notice, the feature of it being open, being able to open 180 degrees is very nice for installation. We're going to go ahead and pre-drill all of our fasteners. This product uses number eight one-inch pan heads, and we're drilling this with a 136 diameter bit. One of the other structural features of the product that is, makes it outstanding is that we fasten with six fasteners in the region of the friction hinge. This allows the product to have a very rigid mount and feel. We have completed drilling all of the starter holes for the fasteners. And at this time, we're going to go ahead and install our sealant. Now, it's very important that we get a good seal between the outer frame and the deck of the vessel. We're actually applying our sealant right through our pre-drilled screw holes, as well as the perimeter of the cutout. Now that we've pressed the product down flush against the deck, I'm checking to make sure that all of the pre-drilled holes are lining up in our receiving sockets. Once we have everything lined up, I'm going to go ahead and take our number eight fasteners and install them under the product. Okay, I never tighten them completely on the initial installation. We like to get all of them in and just firm and then go around a second time and tighten them. My preference is to finish the tightening of the fasteners by hand. Now, I realize that in today's power tools you can preset your clutch for a certain torque specification and that works fine as well. I just want to feel the torque in my hand, make sure the install is done correctly. We can see that the silicone has made its way out from underneath the frame, which is a good sign that we're sealing everywhere. We also notice a little silicone flowing up around the heads of the fasteners. That also is a very good sign. Water can leak around these fasteners given the opportunity and we want to prevent that every chance we, we can. Now that we have finished the installation of the new Jim Black 10 round ventilation hatch, we want to take just a minute and review some of the, the features we discussed earlier. Um, our silicone has dried and our hatch is in an operable condition. So as we talked about earlier, the hatch has tempered glass which has excellent rigidity, excellent optical clarity. It's easy to clean, it's chemically resistant, and will last for many years in the sun. The polymer, being a polyolefin-based material, has been tested in South Florida sun to meet 10-year standards in xenon arc testing. 